Hi, Everyday Superhuman listeners. I'm Doug Parsons, host of America Adapts, the climate change podcast. Climate change isn't some future threat. It's happening right now. Listen into my podcast as I talk to some of the country's leading experts on adaptation. I talk to conservationists, planners, reporters, disasterologists, you name it. If they deal with adaptation, I talk to them. Check out the podcast on iTunes at America Adapts or follow on Facebook at, you guessed it, America Adapts. I consider many of these adaptation experts everyday superhumans. So thanks again to Everyday Superhumans for this plug, and I look forward to hearing all these stories about modern day superhumans. Welcome to Everyday Superhumans, the podcast about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm Caroline. And I'm Kyle. What, what? Yeah, what's up? up? This is a, an exciting episode, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Running and yeah. dogs. Yeah, seriously. As a huge fan of running myself and dogs, this is like one of the coolest people, like, organizations we spoke to. The power is combined yeah. to make a superhuman yeah. nonprofit. Yeah. In the heart of Austin. The Rough Tail Runners. That's right. Their idea is so simple, but not that many people are doing it. Like, there's not that many dog shelters out there. I didn't even know this was a thing until I saw their great marketing campaign with cute puppies and thought, (laughs) oh my God, we need to talk to these people and And get free pets. (laughs) It was a great, it was a great interview. We spoke to them about how the reptile runners began or like how people in other cities are asking to franchise, well not be franchise, you can't franchise a nonprofit, but they want to expand it to the other cities. Uh, and we talk about like how anybody could just walk in to their training sessions and take a dog out and go for a nice jog around the lake. And it gives me an excuse to talk about Nugget. <laughs> it's true. Nugget was even there for yeah. the recording session. Yeah, today was uh, Zach and Anna and special guest Nugget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could probably hear her too, but it makes it more adorable. You know, I think exercise is really good for dogs. You know, I, you know, you guys have, or Caroline has Nugget, and you know, Nugget likes to get out, likes mm-hmm. to go on walks, and that helps them stay relaxed. And you know, that's one of the main goals of Rough Tail Runners is to get the dogs out of the shelter into a more relaxing situation. And here in Austin, we're lucky enough to have a trail close by oh, yeah. where we can, you know, take the dogs by the mm-hmm. lake, and you know, they're just able to de-stress and kind of get out of the shelter environment where it's loud and just a little hectic and that's really good for the dogs and they're able to you know do more training afterwards and there's just a lot more positive things that come out of that and that's what we're trying to promote here yeah because that would be hard i mean if i was a dog and i would be in like a you know cage most of the time i would want to be like i need to get out right now yeah so Yeah. That would be really difficult. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's every dog has, you know, their different limits, and certain dogs need more exercise Mm -hmm. than others. And so this whole program started out about five years ago with uh, Lindsay and Rob, who are still involved Mm -hmm. in the program. And, you know, they were part of a local running group, Team Spirit On. And Austin Pets Alive teamed up with them to start running dogs around the lake. This was when Austin Pets Alive was in their south Mm -hmm. location which was maybe like three or four miles away. Mm-hmm. And okay. they, would, they would bus dogs here, <laughs> and then you would oh. just show up at the trail with an ID. And if you're a part of Teen Spirit On, they did a mini training, and you could just run dogs along the trail. And that's how it started. We're the co-directors and our leadership teams, probably about six or eight people. But we train about 25 new volunteers each month, and um, we always have a wait list for each training that we have so there's a lot of interest for sure i bet that's great because like austin's like such a physically active city like yeah especially like you're like right next here right next to the river yeah that's what he was saying yeah yeah. and i love running around that river just like it's like a nice it's my favorite place to run of like of all time so i could see this being like a great maybe uh maybe you'll join our program and (laughs) run the dogs for us yeah Yeah. it'd be a good excuse to get out and pet some puppies do people bring their own pets and like do like own pet on one side like shelter pet on the other or is it like shelter pets kind of need particular yeah so we don't encourage that we only allow you to take one dog at a time Mm -hmm. just because you never know how different dogs Mm -hmm. are going to act in different situations and you know it's just better for the dog just to be one-on-one with each runner and you know that's part of our 
so what, what we teach in class is we say that you know when you're out there on the trail you're responsible for yourself your dog the shelter our program and the public in general and you know so we want you to be responsible for the dog make sure you're not putting the shelter dog in any mm-hmm. situation that they're not comfortable with as well as anybody else on the trail and so that's why we only allow you to take one dog mm-hmm. at a time and you know don't allow you to bring your own dog to run with a shelter dog mm-hmm. just to keep everything separate mm-hmm. and you know to keep yourself responsible i bet yeah. it creates like a more of a bonding experience too between the dog and the runner like, definitely oh, yeah. the dog's getting special attention from one person yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely but the, definitely like i on my way here today there was that one dog that that just got back from the trail and he was so happy. Yeah, he just started like just he apparently never comes up to random people in the parking lot, but he just he wanted to say hi. <laughs> Came by and he just started like kept him begging for pets. <laughs> yeah. So adorable. Yeah. The shy dogs are really the most rewarding ones to work with for in my opinion. I mean, they're all great, but you really see the biggest transformation mm-hmm. with them because in the kennel they might be you know, super nervous and wary of people and might not even want to get out of the mm-hmm. kennel because they don't know who you are or what you're going to do. But once they get on the trail, they remember how to be a dog and they start <laughs> sniffing and like rolling around the grass and they'll open mm-hmm. up slowly and surely. And it's definitely really rewarding to see them kind of blossom outside so of the adorable. shelter. Do volunteers end up adopting? Oh, yes. A dog very often. They- uh, we've Aww. done that a couple of times. <laughs> How many dogs did you adopt from this program? Two so far. <laughs> Actually, none of them have been rough tails. I, in particular, have a soft spot for the senior dogs. Um, so we just take in the low-energy old guys. Aww. But yeah, we've had a lot of people adopt from RTR. That's super common. We tell everybody that you know we train a sucker twice a month, so usually one person from every group ends up fostering or adopting or otherwise getting really involved. Do people like, have to hold back? Like, oh, God, I got three dogs from up to all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely would want to adopt like, all of the dogs yeah. that I see. Yeah, we, we've tried to keep it a little bit more balanced. We try to adopt older dogs, and I like fluffy like mm. dogs, and so that's what we have gotten from... Uh, it's kind of our that's type. What we have adopted from Austin Pets Live in the past. But the nice thing about adopting an older dog who's lower energy is that we're when we're feeling energetic, we can always come here and volunteer more instead of, you know, having to yeah, run true. our own dog and that would exhaust us already so we wouldn't make it back to the shelter. So it kind of works out for the best for us and for the shelter because we could come back a little bit more. Yeah, but that's not to say that there aren't old dogs on RTR. We have a a whole range of ages and abilities on our program. We have our very energetic one-year-olds that Mm -hmm. could run five miles if Mm -hmm. they wanted to, and we have, I think, a nearly 14-year-old dog who's on our walking team, Uh, So, and um, everything in between. So we definitely have a range of energies and ages, and people usually ask, you know, I know it's rough-tail runners, but can I walk instead? And yes, we definitely have dogs that prefer to walk, so there's something for everybody. How far do you usually take the dogs out on their runs? The max distance when it's nice and cool is usually about three miles. Uh, occasionally, we'll have a dog that can go further than that. We had a dog called Maddie. Uh, she got adopted about a year ago, last August. Uh, she could run about five miles or so, and oh, wow. she actually trained, helped train one of our uh former directors for a half marathon so wow, uh, good dog. yeah we we have a range uh, yeah. when she got her medal for the marathon Lindsay came back and put it around her neck uh, with Aww. maddie and took a photo it was very cute that's a great personal trainer to have right yeah there. yeah <laughs> nuggets adorable. nuggets been my personal trainer <laughs> i can't wait until it gets cooler because she loves to run yeah so it's a great way for you to get back in shape too it definitely like is volunteers mm-hmm. yeah we've had a lot of volunteers say that they uh get back in shape thanks to rtr since they have a regular walking mm-hmm. schedule um right actually the uh lady that you met who was coming back from the trail heather i think the day after she took rough hill training she quit the gym because she was like mm-hmm. i'm gonna come here and walk dogs every day and that's gonna be it and i don't need to go to the gym anymore that's mm-hmm. free too and it's yeah, yeah and it's, it's great for the dogs great for her and she's been a really big help to the rough tail community definitely and how many times do um do as like a volunteer take a dog out throughout the week it's just like whenever they feel it's convenient for them or yeah they can come as um anytime between 8 a.m and 7 p.m every day of the week and we do have restrictions based on the dog especially when the temperature is really high mm-hmm. if it's 100 oh, yeah, degrees you can't August go but Texas. Yeah, yeah but when it's nice and cool uh, the dogs go out maximum twice a day to the trail and we've got a ton of dogs on our RTR team. So, yeah, everyone usually gets a good walk in when the weather's nice and cool. 
How do they become on your RTR team, the dog? We t- trail test them uh, mm-hmm. when they come in in the order that they are that they arrive at the shelter. Um, so we just take them out to the trail to see how they react, if it's going to be kind of overstimulating for them because uh, there's yeah. bikes and strollers and wheelchairs and other dogs, and that may be too much for one dog who is not used to that kind of commotion. But other dogs uh, really relax and thrive in that kind of environment, so we just mm-hmm. see how comfortable they are. How about the dogs that are a bit anxious on the trail? Do you like find like a way to like, make them less anxious or just exercise them here? Or? Yeah, there's – so some dogs aren't allowed to go to the trail, but they can walk around the baseball fields here or you can walk okay. around the baseball fields here. And, you know, some dogs don't even – aren't suited for that either. Let's say they like squirrels way too much. <laughs> Um, yeah. Happens. And, yeah, okay. that happens. And for those dogs, they just stay inside the shelter. But inside the shelter, they have play pins and, you know, longer strays where you can play fetch with the dogs or you can just interact with the dogs there. The other really cool thing about Austin Pets Alive, um, which is where we are right now, is uh, they have play groups. And play groups are a chance for the dogs at the shelter to play with each other. It's a very unique program to Austin Pets Live. I don't know if many other shelters have started doing this. Austin Pets Live was the first one to start doing this, where they have a bunch of behavior uh, team members monitor the dogs playing with each other. And dogs are really social animals, so mm-hmm. it you know really helps them when they can play and kind of hang out with each other. And so that's another thing that they can do if they can't go out to the trail. Some of the dogs are able to do that, though. Well, that's great. Like, you aren't just like, keeping them in the kennel enough for that. Like, there's other ways... Yeah. yeah, we really try at the shelter to find as many ways as possible to get them outside mm-hmm. of their kennel. And yeah. that's good, too, for if, like, the owner, when they hopefully then they get adopted, then they'll be socialized, and mm-hmm. yeah. that really helps them yeah. out in the future. And, and I think it also helps when a dog is more relaxed after they've had a long walk or after they've been playing. When they're in their kennel, they're not as anxious. Mm-hmm. And so when a yeah. potential adopter, like mm-hmm. Caroline, walks by and she yeah. sees a dog that's you know, smiling and happy versus one that is like, you know, really wanting to get out yeah. and, you know, kind of jumping and, and that, that really makes a difference. So I think, you know, yeah. that again is one of the things that we really like about the Rough Tail program. We're able to take dogs out, get them relaxed and, you know, it helps them uh, become adopted eventually. Yeah. So how did you two get involved with the Rough Tail Runners? You said it started five years ago, right? Started formally, yeah, about 2011. We got involved um, in 2013, I guess, the spring of 2013. We heard about it from some friends who joined. Um, so we s- signed up for a training, and we really enjoyed it. We we love going on walks with the dogs around the lake and just having that one-on-one time, like you said before, it was a really great experience for us. And of course, about a month later, we adopted our first dog ourselves. <laughs> but uh, luckily he was lazy and we were able to keep coming back to do RTR after that. Um, so we've just kind of, we've been involved since then. We became co-directors about last year around this time. So now that we're in the leadership team, we're trying to make Rough Tail even bigger and better than it has been in the past. Yeah, what are the uh, f- what are some plans for the future of Rough Tail Runners then? We are looking to start um, a few new chapters in some new cities. For years, we've been getting emails like, how do, can I start this at my shelter? And yeah. you would try to give them some tips, but we never really know if it takes off. So now we're going to try with a lot more intention to do that. Um, we have three cities in mind, El Paso, Laredo, and uh, Richmond, Virginia, oh, of all okay. places. Cool. So two so, Texas and then... One in Virginia, yeah. Um, have you so flown out there to like talk to them now? Or? Not yet. Yeah. We are working on uh, drafting contracts and getting official nonprofit 501c3 status. But um, once we have all that ready to go, we are um, we've got contacts there who are interested in the program. They're willing to uh, work with us to adopt some of our rules and protocols, and uh, hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have everything up and running. Wow. Any other cities on your list that you're looking into? There are tons interested. I wish we could have enough time and energy to devote all of them. Those are the three we're going to start with, and we really want to make sure that we do it right. So we're going to start Mm -hmm. small for now and hopefully get much bigger in the future. Yeah. Again, you know, we have quite a few volunteers, but, you know, volunteering at the animal shelter is a lot different than volunteering and doing back-end work in terms Mm -hmm. of contacting different shelters and, you know, writing down your processes Mm -hmm. and how do you adopt it at a different shelter? You know, there's a lot of things that we would need help with to do that. So I think it's it makes more sense to start off with one or two or three expansion sites yeah. and then 
kind of learn from that and mm -hmm. then see what we can develop if we can have a handbook or something that we can provide to other shelters so that they can start a similar program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would probably need a whole separate team of volunteers just to focus on like, yeah. the mm -hmm. branching out chapters. It's, yeah, it's it's been a challenge for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're all our leadership are volunteers. We don't get paid to do this, so it's all on our so, extra time. Wow. wow. Do you stay up late like working on these plans? Then, Occasionally. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you wake Some up early then, do. right? <laughs> so, I mean, you guys have a lot of passion. Yeah. Right? You just like, like, well, I mean, when you stare into a dog's face, mm -hmm. yeah. let's face it. You, you don't just, really have a choice. You, you just are like, oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. I want to help you in all ways. Yeah, it was really kind of a, a good accident because neither of us really, I grew up with a dog in my family, but I would, you know, as a kid, you didn't really have mm -hmm. a lot of responsibility. So you just play with the dog. and Yeah. Yeah. It. yeah. So when we joined Reptile Runners, it was just kind of on an off, off, uh, off chance and now three years later we are like full-blown dog obsessed people we <laughs> learn about dog behavior we think it's really interesting to think about the psychology of a dog and work with different types of dogs and it's really become something that i never ever would have imagined before but you get obsessed very quickly after you figure out like the treatment i know the treatment like their personality types what's yeah. the easy plan of approach from there like if they're like, super active do you like do you take them out like once a day yeah if yeah. like they're like more of like a lazy chilled back dog do you just take them like once a week we have our um i guess that the best way to answer would be our behavior collar uh colors oh. here at apa so every dog wears a different colored oh. collar to indicate their level of, of activity and um for example our shy more fearful dogs wear orange collars yeah. we have uh boards where every dog's collar color is written down so we can check it out before we meet them. Each volunteer is trained for a certain level. So they start okay. with our pink dogs who are never met a stranger kind of dogs, typically mm -hmm. lower energy, but you know, not gonna pull too hard on the leash. Mm -hmm. So those are our beginner dogs. Um, then we train up for our orange dogs, those shyer, more fearful dogs. You get a little extra training on how to go slow and take things at their pace and not overwhelm them. Um, and then we have our um, blue dogs who are more the higher energy dogs, um, those that can probably mm -hmm. run about five miles or yeah. so if they wanted to. Um, that would be yeah. Nugget. <laughs> nugget was this program. Yeah, so they are uh, typically have more energy. Um, they make excellent RTR companions for that exact same yeah. reason, um, and they're the training level above that. I take it you get a lot of like hardcore runners here that come here as well to volunteer. Mm -hmm. They usually come in, like run with the dog for three miles, come back, run with another dog for three miles. <laughs> <laughs> There's some of our runners who are pretty serious. Uh, Jason is one of them. I know he's done yeah. you know, seven and a half minute miles with a couple of the dogs. <laughs> oh. And then two of our volunteers, Mike and Serena, we're on the rice track team, I think, or cross country team together. And on the UT, I think, triathlon team. Oh, wow. So they have some pretty wow. serious athletes. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they're pretty fast. I, I haven't timed Mike recently. So. <laughs> yeah, feature Olympians working yeah, here. Yeah, pretty like. much. Man, I bet uh, the dogs like come back and take a nap after all of it. Yeah. They yeah, we, probably try, are to, pretty we tired. try to get them some ice mm -hmm. in with their water and let them relax afterwards. But to answer your other question, we try to. At the shelter, we try to get the dogs out, you know, two or three times a day just to give them mm -hmm. time to potty and take care of the business and kind of um, just be out of their kennel for a little bit. And every dog is allowed to go out as many times as they want to. Um, we, if you're a how do you know they, dog, no, how do you know if you're they want to go out? Do they have like a bell that they ring or something? <laughs> well, I think I everyone wish. wants to go out. But. Service, please. Yeah. They have a butler that comes in, <laughs> and they're butler. like, "Would you we're like? On that. <laughs> would you like a walk now, sir?" Yeah. Sometimes it feels like we're the butlers. <laughs> but, yeah. As um, you're yeah. No. So, so we have a whiteboard that you know shows what time the dogs have been out in the past okay. so you know if a dog hasn't been out for a few hours and you're here and you have time to take another dog out you might see that oh um, nugget hasn't been out for three hours or mm -hmm. five hours let's take her out or him out for mm -hmm. a walk or just a potty break or something um if it's if that dog is able to run on the trail maybe you take him out to the trail if they're just walk if they're just a walker you might 
take them on a walk. If mm-hmm. they can't do either of those, you might, you know, do whatever you can to mm-hmm. let that dog just, you know, hang out for a little bit. Mm-hmm. We have about 160 dogs here at the shelter that we volunteer at. Some are on our RTR team, others are not. Each dog gets out a minimum two times a day for their bathroom breaks and stuff like right. that, which is a lot more than some shelters are able to do. Oh. Uh, two a day doesn't sound like much, but it's pretty unusual uh, in the shelter world to manage have it mandatory for them to go out at least twice a day. Huh. So with our staff and volunteers, we're able to do that. But obviously, we try to get them out much more often than that. And with you guys expanding now to other areas, I could see that being like probably creating a trend maybe amongst animal shelters to start taking dogs out more and like make this a more regular thing. Yeah, that's what we hope. We're definitely part yeah. of that movement where we want to uh, you know, decrease time spent in kennels and make sure that dogs get all the energy that they need to get. Yeah, I think one of the things that's nice about the Rough Tail program is it gives people a reason to go to the shelter. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you know, people go to the shelter and they're very limited in the number of things they can do. And Rough Tail really provides people who are athletic and energetic and have a lot of energy an outlet to help a little bit more at a shelter and it really brings in a lot more volunteers Mm -hmm. and what we've seen is that after we bring in volunteers who Mm -hmm. first start off doing walks and runs they end up becoming involved in other parts of the shelter as well it's Mm -hmm. like a gateway drug in a way yes (laughs) happened to us you just have to ask anna yeah what she's hooked on now everything that i do (laughs) So does the Rough Tail Runners have like any kind of like outreach programs? Like do you go to like any 5Ks here and like start handing out flyers, say, hey, when you're done with this race, how about you run with some dogs? Or Yeah, we, um, especially our kind of sister organization, Team Spirit on that running group that kind of started the whole thing. They, um, we usually have water stations like at the half marathon in February where we have water, of course, and also advertise for our organizations. Um, some of our RTR dogs do go to local 5Ks if they allow animals. Oh, um, okay. So volunteers can uh, fill out a form for a field trip, as we call them, and they'll take them to a 5K oh, early in the morning. So, so cute. Yeah, yeah. We've had some dogs actually win, win categories. I think the last one was Barky. He was like the fastest woman in her age group, our volunteer. <laughs> so cute. Switching to this picture of like a dog like going to medal. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure we have a photo. Dogs or something. <laughs> Has she gotten adopted? Barky's still here. Aww. So, but uh, he, if anyone's listening and is a really serious runner, Barky's a good dog for you. Aww. Barky all the way. Yeah, <laughs> Barky, that's so cute. And then, do you all name them? Like, how does that work when they come in? Um, typically, they'll already have a name. We so the way APA works is that they um they pull dogs from the city shelter here in Austin Austin Animal Center. Um. Mm-hmm. So typically they'll already have a name from Austin. Um, if it's if we've got another dog at APA that has that same name already, then the volunteer that transports them or the mm-hmm. staff member that transports them from the shelter can choose a different name for them. So I haven't had that opportunity yet, but oh, mm-hmm. just like dogs kind of change names a lot. Like our my old dog. Whenever we got her, she was three years old, and her name was Verica before. Wow, Verica. But we, named, we changed her name to Nina. Because it's called a Nina, and she had some tra- she had some trauma in her, so like Nina for girl, yeah. So I got her Nina instead. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like the dogs change yeah. names a lot. Does that get Nugget was Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Okay. And then I I called her Nugget. Does it kind of <laughs> is it kind of hard to get the dog to listen to you like when you first get the dog from the shelter and you're trying to like get them a name or something? I I think you know one of the reasons we change the name here at the shelter is you just don't know what experiences the dog has had with Mm. their previous name. So if they were owner surrender and they weren't in a good situation or they just have a negative association with the name that they had, Mm. it's good to let them start over. And dogs are quick learners. You know, Mm -hmm. they're gonna if you give them enough treats, they'll respond about anything. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm sure you know Nugget over here. (laughs) If Nugget over here, if we had some treats, I'm sure I could get her to respond to you know Princess peach or something yeah. and it would yeah. take like you know maybe a day but she yeah, would start she responding would, to yeah. that it's funny you say That's princess great. peach because uh my roommate him and his actually now ex-girlfriend but they got a dog together and they named the dog peach because and smash brothers that was his best <laughs> character was princess peach so, That's funny. Yeah. so they named the dog peach or peaches <laughs> so cute yeah. we haven't been very creative with our dog <laughs> names that we've adopted no what what have the names been our first dog here at apa his apa name was coyote oh. uh we switched that to cody oh, uh, I, I don't see. think he ever really knew his he was not the brightest bulb uh, <laughs> i don't know if he ever really caught on to what cody meant but uh, our current dog is pepper her name here was piper 
So oh. we didn't even, there wasn't even a transition phase. She thought it was the same. Yeah. So. I'm pretty so, sure that's what Nugget, she just thinks it's nutmeg still. It's like, yeah. No. <laughs> Since we're on the topic about names, I have an important question to bring up. Recently, a friend of I got into a debate about what's a cuter name for a dog. Mm-hmm. I said Bubble. And he said pancake or bubbles, and he said pancake. <laughs> what do you think is a cure name? Bubbles. Yeah. I like pancake. Yeah, that's. But it's like we're talking like a small, like corgi style dog. Like, what would you? Like, what's a cure uh, name? A corgi. Ooh. Yeah. We know a corgi named Pillow. Which Ooh, <laughs> that wins. Never mind. It's just pretty good. Pillow is amazing. Corgis look like pillows. I mean, they're so yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah. But we we're talking about, like what the perfect name for a corgi is, and I said it was like being bubbly dogs, like bubbles, and he's like pancake. Yeah. I'm like, ah. They have bubble butts too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I might be on Team Bubbles. Team Bubbles. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll let him know. I'll send my text off for this. I, well, I, I feel like you have to meet the dog. Yeah. yeah. It's to, yeah. you know, you have to yeah. match the personality with the dog and without meeting the dog, it's hard for me to decide. That's true. Yeah, That's true. what I was We were just talking hypothetical dogs and you know, I was on yeah. the corgi. But you, you gotta see Hello. Yeah. <laughs> They're so fluffy and small like a pillow. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute. We haven't seen pillow in a long time. Should set up a play date. <laughs> Doggy play dates. This is, I um, guess, tangentially related, but since, like, one thing with uh, dogs, like, I see this across the Austin Park, so I was always a science for, like, dogs and dehydration and stuff like that. Are yes. there, like, any, like, preventive measures people can do to, like, if they're taking their dog out for a run? Oh, to, great like, question. Yeah, definitely. So... One of the things when you're taking your dog out for a run or even a walk is just really be mindful of the temperature, especially of pavement and stuff. Because mm-hmm. especially when it's hot out, when the sun's out, the pavement can be 20 to 30 degrees hotter than it is outside. Mm-hmm. Oh. And dogs don't have shoes on. So imagine being barefoot in a 100 degree yeah. pavement. It's not very comfortable for them. So that's one thing to really be careful of. The second thing is dogs can't sweat. So mm-hmm. they're more likely to overheat. I think mm-hmm. the statistic is they're 10 times more likely to overheat than a human is. So oh, wow. you should always be watching out if they're um, lagging behind you, if they don't want to walk anymore. A lot of times you shouldn't force them to. And if they're looking very dehydrated, you can always give them more water, mm-hmm. wet their fur so that you can kind of sweat mm-hmm. for them, mm-hmm. you know, by splashing water on their bellies, on their backs, on their paws. And that, that those are some of the things that, you know, we recommend. Um, anything else that I forgot about that? No, yeah, that's something we're very conscious of, especially during the summer here. Um, on the trail, we see a lot of dogs out when it's super hot, and I get nervous. But um, at RTR, we have our rules. We have temperature restrictions. And What's if, the, What are the restrictions usually on that? Um, we go by what the feels like temperature is, so not the actual temperature, okay. but how it feels with humidity and everything. So if it's above 85 degrees, uh, we don't run the dogs. We just walk them. If it gets to be above 95, then we don't have any outings at all. Oh. So, of course, during the summer, that definitely limits our activity. People yeah, have to get here July super early. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, we understand that um, it's always more fun to hit the trail, but uh, we really, that's a really effective way to prevent overheating with dogs. Uh, we haven't had any incidents this year, which has been really great. Um, and, you know, at the shelter, we can always take the dogs out of their kennels to a playpen if they can't go out to the trail. So there's always any, no matter what the temperature is, what time it is, there's always an opportunity to hang out with the dogs here at the shelter. Um, right. Yeah. When Anna and I go out to different places, sometimes we freak out when we see dogs mm-hmm. walking when they shouldn't mm-hmm. be. So we were in Arizona this summer by the, in Sedona hiking and it was like 95 degrees mm-hmm. out or something wow. like that. And these people were walking their German Shepherd dogs oh. and their old retrievers. And we were just like, what are you doing? Yeah. It, was, it puts us on alert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do love all the signs, though, here, especially at like yeah. Zilker Park mm-hmm. and other places around that say, like, you know, at this temperature, you should not be running your dog. You should only be walking your dog. Mm-hmm. That's really helpful. Yeah. As a as a doggy parent. Right. So. It's not something that you really know, you know, right off the bat. It's something that you learn as you work with dogs more. I definitely didn't know about it before we started here. So yeah. we try to, you know, educate people online on our website or putting up signs on the trail just to let them know that their dog can't do everything that they can do when it's 100 mm-hmm. degrees mm-hmm. because not everybody knows, including me. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't know about the um, about their paws mm-hmm. on the pavement. Yeah, yeah. I didn't consider until, that. like a little bit, and then I was like, "Oh my gosh, Nugget!" <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I think the other thing that 
I see that I didn't know before was if you have a really young dog, you're actually not supposed to run them until they're about one. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. It's kind of Why like having like a really young mm-hmm. kid, um, their joints and stuff aren't developed yet. Oh, okay. And so if you mm-hmm. run them too hard or too long, then they're more Prone likely to, injury, to yeah. Yeah, injure themselves. Huh. Huh. I know and that. so yeah. we'll see some, some people around our apartment complex will have like what looks like an eight or nine month old dog and they're like trying to get them to run and part of me is like say yeah, something and part of me is like <laughs> the dog yeah. police that's kind of <laughs> yeah. that's your, how we <laughs> pull your RTR back <laughs> sorry yeah. we can't have you do that oh my gosh it's like our everyday superhuman thing yeah. we always like to ask our guests like what superhero their organization would be you, Zach knows more superheroes than I do and you can you can make up your own yeah last week we interviewed Yellow Bikes uh, Yellow Bikes <laughs> shop and they said like he'll be bicycle repairman <laughs> <laughs> The dog police. <laughs> Be like the dog whispers. The dog yeah, whispers. the dog whispers. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. I like that. No, we try to make it as fun as and positive as we absolutely can. The less policing, the better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. So how could somebody get involved here through, uh, either through volunteering or through like, donations? Are there places people could go for either of those? Yes. Um, we can go to our website, reptilerunners.org, to learn how to get involved. There's a Get Involved tab that you can click on, and that explains the sign-up process for our trainings. For donations, uh, Reftails, I don't think most of our donations come straight through APA, and okay. um, APA has a list on their website of things that they could use, old towels and blankets and things like that, as well as food and other equipment, and you can drop it off with APA when you come to the shelter. Okay. Everything that you need to know is on the website for how to get involved with this. There's, mm-hmm. like, you said that there's like training you have to go to? When's yes. that usually held? Um, we have one on a Saturday and one on a Sunday each month. It's about two hours long. Um, okay. that's, not big, that's not much of your time. Yeah, yeah. We try to make it as, uh, painless as possible, <laughs> as short as possible to get them involved. So, uh, yeah, they can look on our website for that. We should be announcing our October dates in the next week or so running in the falls, even better anyway, less mm-hmm. temperature restrictions. Yeah. I bet that's a good social organization too. You probably meet a lot of friends. Yeah, uh, RTR. Yeah, we definitely have a community here among the volunteers, both APA and RTR. Uh, we have happy hours together. Oh. Sometimes the dogs come, sometimes they don't. <laughs> Give a dog a shot of tequila. Yeah, <laughs> <There's>, not recommend. <laughs> yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, kids. <laughs> yeah, it's been a great community. Uh, we all help each other learn and talk about the dogs together, and it's just something else to bond over with other people who share that same weird com- obsession that you do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hopefully uh, somebody will be listening to this episode while they're out there running with a dog because this has been great. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or adopt a dog. Or adopt a dog too. <laughs> yeah. Austin Pitts a lot. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for having us. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I thought that was such a cool idea for a volunteerization to do Oh, something. where did you guys get the name? I forgot about oh, yeah. that. Did we ask that? <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> um... I don't know the whole story, but I do know that we were jog a dog before we were reptile uh, runners. Yeah. However, there was some uh, trademark dispute. Uh, uh, There's actually a treadmill company that jog- makes treadmills for dogs jog-a-dog. What? called Jog a Dog. Really? <laughs> and they got upset that we were using that name. So we had to change it. I don't know where reptile runners came from exactly, but yeah. I do know it's that it's mm. our second iteration of our organization so far. Too bad I can use a jog a dog though. That's yeah. A yeah. But I like reptile runners. Mm. It flows better. For more on the Roughtail Runners, check out roughtailrunners.org. If you want to volunteer, go to meetup.com and put their name in the search bar to RSVP for their next training session. They can also be found on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also find us, Everyday Superhumans, online at everydaysuperhumans.com. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook at facebook.com slash everydaysuperhumans. Follow us on Twitter at superhumanscast. And check us out on Instagram at everydaysuperhumans. And hey, if you like the episode, don't forget to rate and subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Before you go, we have an announcement. We have a very special mini episode next week featuring the everyday volunteers at the Reptile Runners. I don't want to really spoil anything about it, but it's a really touching short episode and... Fantastic. And remember, not every hero has to fly. So grab your cape and let's go. 